Welcome again, Rangers fans, to another Midweek Coaches Show where we recap what has happened in the last seven days in Ranger Athletics and then looking ahead for the next seven days of what's to come. And uh, uh, last Friday night, our football team closed out its non-district schedule with a, with a big home win against East Central, 55-7 to convincing win over East Central here at home. and. Uh, uh, a good way to close out a tough non-district schedule and uh, get a lot of players in the ball game. Got, got to get everybody in the roster uh, on the field and they're not always able to do that. So uh, uh, feeling good about things as we go into district. So let's recap that game uh, briefly. Uh, Coach West for almost a shutout uh, against East Central kind of came out and did some unexpected things offensively that troubled us early. Yes, sir. They came out and they went five wides, uh, empty backfield. Uh, they hadn't done that all year long, uh, you know. But so we had to do some adjusting to that early in the game. I uh, thought our kids did that and uh, adjusted fairly well. We held them to three explosive plays, which is three too many. But uh, a team that had been explosive, uh, you know, we were able to limit those a little bit and create some takeaways. Uh, you know, so I, I was really proud of our kids and the way they adjusted to, to a different style of offense a little bit or different formations being thrown at them and then being able to adjust to it. Well, you mentioned takeaways. You know, a week after getting four takeaways up at Harker Heights, we come home and, and we have three. Yes, sir. So, uh, like yeah. you said, limiting explosives and getting three takeaways makes it uh, – sets the table up for your offense pretty well. And then you mentioned just three explosives. Offensively, Coach G. Hill uh, – 16. 16 explosives. An explosive play is a run over 12 yards or a pass over 18 yards by our definition. Uh, 16, I think we've done that before a time or two, but it's been a while. Yes, sir, it has. And, um, you know, I think we were extremely balanced. Uh, had three running backs rush for a lot of yards. Kate Spradling uh, just on eight carries had about 120 and three touchdowns. Brad Sowers, we had another great uh, night running the football. And then Daniel DeHoyos came in late and did some really great things and ran for over 100 yards. Uh, so, you know, about 300 in the run game and over 200 in the pass game uh, really helped keep us balanced and spread the ball around the field and helped us get those 16 explosive plays. You bet. And our offensive line played extremely well up front against uh, a, a little bit of a chaotic uh, defense, I guess you would say, coming from all different angles. And, uh, you know, they kept their head on straight and blocked them up pretty good. And uh, uh, just a good all-around win uh, doesn't – particularly help you any as far as uh, your district race goes. and uh, But we close out non-district against three quality opponents going two and one. And uh, we open district play this coming Friday uh, here at Ranger Stadium against Wagner, who is traditionally uh, a, a tough kill. Uh, we'll be again, uh, you know, we'll, we're up against it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that game when we come back. But as we always do here at the midpoint, we're going to kick it over to Melissa Miller, our, volley, our head volleyball coach and assistant athletic coordinator. And, and she's going to talk about what's happened in other sports uh, around the campus and then talk about the week ahead. So to you, Coach Miller. Thanks, Coach Hill, and congrats to our football team for a huge win over East Central Friday night. We also want to give a huge shout out to everybody that helped with the pep rally here at school on Friday. Um, it takes so many groups and administrators and teachers to pull that off. I thought it was, I mean, what did you think? That was your first pep rally. That was, and it was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed the yeah. spirit stick and handing that to the seniors. They won this week, so good for them. Yeah, I'm excited because those juniors, I felt, were pretty close. They so were. They were I'm curious to see, now that, and now that the freshmen realize how to win the spirit stick. I think the next one's gonna be insane, but huge shout out. Our cheer, dance, ROTC in the setup, um, band, everybody just creates an environment unlike anything I've ever been at. So started the day off with a great pep rally. Again, huge win by football. Um, let's talk about some of the other sports last week. So volleyball took on two tough opponents last week. Uh, New, we went to New Braunfels on Tuesday and then we hosted Piper on Friday. Um, unfortunately, those didn't go our way. We ended up losing both of them in five sets by two points each, um, 15 to 13 to New Braunfels and 17 to 15 to Piper. Um, you know, it could be a point where it's a turning point in the season. And that's what we've told the girls. That's how the coaching staff is looking at it. Um, it was kind of a wake up call for us. That was our first district game against Piper. We're moving through the rest of district. A little bit of a chip on our shoulder, a little bit different mindset. So I'm excited to see what the girls come out and do the rest of the season. 
Um, Cross Country had a great run Saturday. They headed out to the Canyon Invitational, which again was at the district course. So it was a good preview for um, Coach Hall and Coach Nunley about what how our kids look. Um, Shout out to our boys team who brought home second overall, um, only behind Bernie Champion, who's currently ranked number three in the state. Coach Hall was really impressed with the way that they ran with them. We were right behind them the whole time. Shout out to Braden Youngdahl, who brought home third individually. And then on the girls' side, um, we didn't compete with a full girls' team, but we do want to give a shout out to Mia Perez, who has always been a fantastic runner for us, bringing home um, the individual second place. So good luck. Congratulations to them. Um, and guess who got a win on Friday? Our water polo team, oh, our girls' excellent. water polo team in their second season um, had a huge win versus Canyon Lake on Friday. Hats off to Coach Duckworth, Coach Randall, um, all those girls who practice every single day. We are still one boy short. So if you are interested in joining our boys' water polo team, we are missing one male athlete to be able to compete. They are scrimmaging all these teams that they're going to, but to actually get on the schedule and get a real game in, we're needing one boy. Um, we actually had senior Reed Wagner, who's a multi-sport athlete, come out last week in the scrimmage and he was quoted as saying this is the most fun I've had playing a sport so if water polo is something that's interesting to you come on by my office find coach Duckworth like I said we need one more boy for a full team we'll take as many as we can get but those kids have a lot of fun and um, we'd love to be able to field an entire boys water polo team yeah that would be great yeah how about tennis uh tennis yeah they're in the middle of their district season so currently they're seven and six overall three and one in district um coach Lalonde's really happy with the way they're playing we have a very tough district when it comes to tennis. Um, so he did want to give some shout outs to junior Ava Smith, Electra Hart, Jude Bruce, and then Jacob Tuskbury. Um, he just said that they're, he, he's pleased with the way everybody's playing, but he wanted to give a shout out to those guys. They're really leading the pack, playing really good tennis, um, being really good leaders in the program. So shout out to them, all of our tennis team. Um, and we're going to talk about where you can find all these sports coming up in the next week. But first, uh, Ms. Snyder, are there any, you, you know, you've been through a full couple weeks of athletics now. Are there any other groups that you feel like need some love and some attention and a shout out for what they do for us? Yes, we would like to give a shout out to our our. TC kids. They do a couple different things. They're always ready. Um, they assist with our parking for games and they're they're fantastic at it. They also are runners um, when we score touchdowns. Mm -hmm. They're they're just they also post our colors before the game. Um, Pep so, rally setup. Yes. Pep rally takedown. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. ROTC is everywhere. They, they are, and they're doing a fantastic job. The other group that we really want to highlight is our athletic trainers. Our kids stay healthy and hydrated because mm -hmm. of our athletic trainers. So shout out to you guys also. Um, if you want to see them, you can find them in the games coming up next week. Why don't you tell us about the games next week? All right, so let's talk about where you can find our Rangers this week. If you're interested in checking out our volleyball team, we have two home matches this week. Tonight, we will play here at Smithson Valley versus Veterans Memorial. Uh, varsity plays at seven with all of our sub varsities playing before that. Uh, if you wanna wait till Friday, we are hosting Wagner. Uh, we will, varsity will play at 6.30. It is our middle school appreciation night. So we ask all of our middle school kids are gonna get bussed here, all of our volleyball players. Um, we look forward to making it a fun night for them. If you have a younger kid, it would be a great opportunity to bring them out. Um, there's a little autograph signing session at the end, so it's always a fun game. We look forward to hosting all of our middle school volleyball players. Uh, cross Country is going to head Saturday to the Hayes Invitational in Buda. They're still gearing up for their district race, so we wish them lots of luck, safe travels as they head to Buda. And then tennis. Uh, today, actually, you can find tennis here at Smithson Valley as they take on Kerrville Tyvee. And then our water polo team, we've talked a lot about them. If you want to see them, you can find them today at Canyon. Again, our girls will play at 615, um, and then Friday they will be at Davenport. So coach, tell us a little bit about water polo. What, okay. what, what's this sport involved? So if you're interested in water polo, it's kind of a mix of soccer and football, but played in the water. So um, you're trying to score goals, you've got headgear on. Um, it, it takes the aspects, the team aspects of soccer and basketball, play running, that kind of stuff, but you're doing it while in the water. So we run in the water? No, you Explain actually this. have to tread water the entire ah, time. Okay. So a water polo game is not super long. It's about 40 minutes because you are treading water the entire time. So if you're looking to stay in shape, build your endurance, um, water polo is a great option for that. 
We also want to wish a huge good luck to our football team uh, as they take on the Wagner Thunderbirds this Friday here at Smithson Valley and Ranger Stadium at 7 p.m. So Wagner, mm -hmm. second high school in Judson mm -hmm. ISD. And our trivia this week is about Wagner, where they got their name. I have no idea. Well, I, I don't know. I think it starts a little bit with their mascot, right? Yeah, that's a good hint. Um, it's not the mythical bird that you're thinking of. So a Thunderbird, it's my understanding their Thunderbirds are from the demonstration flight team of the Air Force. There's your hint. Okay. Well, maybe Coach Hill. Coach Hill, back to you. Give us a little bit more information on Wagner High School. Good question. Uh, I might know the answer, but I'm going to throw it out to you guys first. Uh, who's Wagner named after? That would be Karen Wagner, um, Air Force. And, you know, it's 9-11 week this week, and unfortunately she uh, passed in the Pentagon um, during that day in 9-11. Right. Uh, I believe she was a Judson High School graduate as well. Right. Right. When it came time to open the second high school, they chose uh, to honor her by uh, naming the second high school after her, which uh, uh, obviously was a great choice. So uh, the Wagner Thunderbirds uh, also are two and one in their non-district uh, play. And, and much like the Rangers played some pretty formidable opponents, uh, handily beat Dripping, I mean, excuse me, uh, Liberty Hill in the opener, a team that traditionally goes far in the 5A playoffs, has even won a state championship uh, in recent memory, and then uh, had, a, had a loss to Dripping Springs, a, a powerful 6A uh, program up in the Austin area, and then won big last week against San Marcos. So they've been battle-tested uh, like, like we kind of feel that we have. So uh, uh, no real advantage there. Uh, very talented team, very well-coached team, and a different style of play. And let's start with uh, our defense against their offense. Coach Westerfer, uh, they're a little out of the mainstream and they're very good at it. They're extremely good at it. And, and like you said, they're out of the mainstream. They run that uh, military academy option style offense. You know, they don't right. block everybody and they read. And uh, you know, if you take the dive, then the quarterback will pull it. And if you take him, he'll pitch it. So there's three options on most plays for them. Uh, you know, it, it'll be a challenge to defend. They're, they're a run-heavy team. They're rushing the ball for more than 500 yards a game right now, uh, you know, which that's going to be a challenge for our kids and, and, and to try and stop that rushing attack or slow it down. You know, they've got a lot of explosive running backs. They spread the ball around a lot to those guys, and uh, we'll have to do a great job of playing responsibility-oriented football, and, and everybody has to do their job. And then we'll have to tackle well because, you know, there's going to be some solo tackles that will need to be made. And, Right. Our kids will be challenged. There's no doubt about that. Very, and as I said, very well coached and uh, talented kids running that scheme, uh, which is well thought out. And it's, of course, not something you've defended all year right. and, and won't the rest of the year. So that, that too adds to the difficulty of it. Uh, you know, it's just not something our players are familiar with. Uh, I think because of their off schedule offense and, and its success, uh, oftentimes overlooked is their defense. Uh, extremely talented uh, and, and again, very well coached. And Coach Hill, what do they bring to the table defensively? Yeah, they've got a, a really great veteran defense. They're returning a lot of defensive linemen on their front. Uh, there's big, strong guys up there. Um, number 75, their nose guard, he, he's a big boy. Number 88, Greg Williams plays in for him. He's, a, I believe, a three-year starter for him. Really talented up front, got some good guys in the secondary. And they play a little bit of a unorthodox front, a 3-3 stack, um, kind of bringing maybe a fourth and fifth guy on the line as well, which is something that you don't just see all the time. So right. we're going to have to have our, our, our stuff lined up and ready to go to block these guys. And it's going to be a physical matchup, no right. doubt. No doubt. That's their style of play, and uh, we're going to have to find a way to stop them. going to have to find a way to move the ball and find a way to make some difference-making plays in the kicking game. But uh, all that, uh, you'll get a chance to see all of that Friday night at Ranger Stadium in the district opener uh, here at home, as I said, at 7 o'clock. Uh, we hope you'll come out and support the Rangers. And uh, as mentioned earlier, all these other activities we're having on our campus, we hope you'll get out and support those groups as well. See you next time and go Rangers.